So the mid-chapter update's out. Behavior has been really working a lot on rebalancing killers after their chapter. This time, Pyramid Head's up on the chopping block, and rightfully so. He had a really annoying style to play against if played well, making situations that survivors had no way to outplay. Previously, Pyramid Head could cancel his special attack, which goes through level geometry into a basic attack immediately with no penalty. This meant if a survivor was coming up to a pallet or a window, Pyramid Head could just prepare his special attack to guarantee a hit with his special if they interacted with it, or guarantee a hit if they didn't interact with it by canceling his special into a basic. With this update, Pyramid Head now has a movement speed debuff and an attack cooldown after canceling his special, kind of like Huntress. To compensate, he has a lower cooldown after actually doing his special attack, to make missing it less detrimental. Hopefully this means Pyramid Heads will be going for their special attack more often instead of baiting a window or pallet interaction. There's also been a ton of perk changes, and we'll go through them all. First off, for simplicity while scrolling through your perks, all perks have been normalized in rank. They'll always be yellow for tier 1, green for tier 2, and purple for tier 3. Now let's go through the actual changes to the perks. All the killer ones first, then the survivor ones. Trail of Torment now lets the killer remain undetectable until the generator they kicked to activate the perk stops progressing or until a survivor is injured or downed. Previously, this was just about 15 seconds, which wasn't that useful, especially because it highlights the gen the killer kicked. It gave the survivors enough time to really pay attention to where the killer could be coming from and pretty much negate the use of this perk. But now it could be used to really confuse survivors when the undetectable status lasts for so long. Force Penance now lasts longer. 20 seconds extra on all tiers. It's still not going to be very useful. First off, someone needs to take a protection hit, which doesn't happen super often, and even then, the broken debuff just really encourages that survivor to do gens, and that's not what you want. Thanatophobia no longer affects healing speed, but its othering penalties are increased by 1%. Sabotage speed still basically changes nothing, and not being able to slow down healing with it really just takes this perk that wasn't that useful to begin with and makes it pretty much pointless. Sure, you can get a 20% debuff to gen speeds, but remember that debuff doesn't affect whoever you're chasing or whoever's hooked, so you're likely never getting the full value out of it. Not to mention, survivors can just heal the debuff off very quickly because there's no penalty to it anymore. Mindbreaker's effect now lasts 2 seconds longer than before. That doesn't sound like that big of a change, and to be honest it isn't. A total of 5 seconds of exhaustion does hardly anything on survivors that have exhaustion perks other than sprint burst, when they can just wait at certain loops for exhaustion to run out. Even more so, it doesn't do anything on survivors that don't have exhaustion perks, so it's a gamble whether you actually get any effect out of the perk anyway. Cruel Limits now has a longer range, 32 meters, where it was previously 24. It's a neat increase, but windows being blocked for 30 seconds around a completed generator isn't the most important effect in the world. It doesn't block pallets, but maybe combined with Cruel Limits you might seal everything a survivor can do in a large radius, but it's not very likely. Discordance now has a limited range, 96 meters, which is still pretty far, and no longer spams the loud noise notifications at you while it's active. Discordance used to have an odd interaction when leveling by giving you less information when you leveled it up, and they removed that as well, with it being marked until the requirements are no longer fulfilled for 8 seconds. Great change. Hex Huntress Lullaby now only reveals itself on the survivor's screens after it has one token, and only affects healing and repair skill checks. I assume prior to this, it affected things like snapping out of it or jigsaw boxes. I never saw it used very much anyway. Seems like it might be easier to keep it up at the beginning of a match since it doesn't reveal itself immediately, so that's a plus. Pop Goes the Weasel now only lasts 45 seconds, down from 60 seconds previous to this update. Thankfully, it's not how it was previously when it launched at 30 seconds, so you'll have time to kick, but there's definitely more agency behind deciding whether to take a chase or kick the gen. Alright, that's all the killer perks, let's move on to the survivor ones. Blood Pact's speed buff now scales with the level of the perk, and isn't on a timer anymore. It instead lasts until the survivors who heal together are no longer within 16 meters of each other. It's a pretty good buff, and could open some looping opportunities with a nearby teammate. Any means necessary is that it's cooldown cut in half. 2 minutes was a really long time to wait for a perk that wasn't super powerful. Most of the time the killer is going to break safe pallets, which are the ones you want to reset and most won't kick unsafe ones, which are the ones you'll be able to reset. Oh, and you get some blood points now. Neat. For the people, it gives you blood points when you use it. Also neat. Slippery Meat no longer affects escaping from trappers' traps, since they're trying to move away from perks that directly counter a specific killer. As a buff, it now increases your hook escape percentage, which is where it usually found its niche anyway, in self-hook escape builds with luck perks and offerings. Technicians no longer RNG. 
You can miss any generator skill check and it won't explode, so it won't reveal your position. Perfect for newer players practicing skill checks, but they added a penalty to punish you harder for missing skill checks, so that kind of sucks. We're Gonna Live Forever is no longer just a blood point farming perk. You heal slugs, or down survivors, faster, and you get tokens from flashlight saves and pallet saves. Even though that already happened? But it's listed now. That's great, definitely gonna be using this more. So that's all the perk changes. There's also visual updates for the Macmillan Estate maps, as well as lockers and blood effects, and now there's footstep visual effects too. Maybe it'll help killers track a bit better. And a few bug fixes. Probably some more introduced as usual. Alright, that's basically it about this update. Thanks so much for watching, make sure to like and subscribe for more content like this. See y'all!